Hello YouTubers, welcome to my new video. If you've seen my last video, I built a transmitter that used an audio input. Um, I had a lot of requests asking if I could build a similar transmitter but using a microphone. And I thought why not? Right, and this is a transmitter I've built. So in this video I'm going to show you how to build this. It's a very simple transmitter, it's using two stage, an audio transistor and an oscillator so it hasn't got a buffer or an amplifier very simple to make needs no special parts and you could build this very very easily all right shall we get building well this is the part i make up the um transmitter not many parts there's our caps our resistors battery connector there's our mic there's our inductor, that's a 5 turn core. Two transistors, these are 2 n 3 9 There's our antenna, a bit of each ring. That's it. There's all your parts. Shall we get the old in? Okay, first part of this build. We're going to be using the microphone. The 100 end cap and the R1 which is the 47k resistor that's a load resistor for the mic that limits the current going to the microphone and this um, 100 n cap which is C1 uh, this couples the output from the mic to the base of the uh, audio transistor um, basically this separates the DC voltage um, going into the base of the amp so what we'll first, what we'll do now is just cut these leads to size. Now what we'll do, we'll twist the 100 end cap around the resistor. There you go. Bit of flux. Always handy. Make soldering a hell of a lot easier. Okay. Okay. R1 and C1 are soldered together. So what we need to do now is just attach this to the positive side of the mic. Just make sure you get this right way around. There we go. Alright, next what we'll do, we'll just shorten the leads on this. Let's see, we don't want them too long. I'm going to keep my transmitter as short as possible. Okay, next, next stage is attaching the two biosyn resistors to the audio amplifier. So we've got R3, the 10K, going to the collector side of the transistor, the audio amp, and 1M, which turns the transistor on. That goes from the bottom of 10K, which is here, and goes straight to the base. All right, first thing we need to do is shorten the lead. Um, the collector lead of the transistor. Right, see that? Just shorten that lead. And what we'll do, we'll join these two resistors together. There we go. Bit of flux. That will stand in focus for you. Right. So we join them two together now. We'll just cut them and join them up. Okay, so um, let's cut the bottom. Let's cut it out. Right, 
And then just solder that onto the collector side of the transistor. There we go. What we need to do next is just fold round the bottom of the 1M resistor. Just loop it round like that. to do next now is just soldering the bottom of the one meg resistor to the base of the audio amp. There we go. Okay, next part's a bit tricky. So basically we've got our two parts we've built up now, we've got our microphone, we've got our load resistor, R1, we've got the output. So this will be going to the base, remember, of the audio amplifier. And we've got our transistor amplifier here with its two load resistors connected. So basically what we've got to do now is marry these two together. And the way I'm going to do it, I hope you can see that well, we're going to push the transistor right into the mic, like that, and attach. Can we see that? We're going to attach the load resistor to the 10k, so that become our positive rail. So it's going to be a bit tricky getting this together. Just pop that around there, like that. Good old flux. I'll we'll solder that on. Looks a bit messy at the moment, but you'll understand it all when it's connected. All right. Now, don't forget our output right pin from the microphone is going to connect to the base of the transistor. So we'll connect that right there. Let's push it all together. The next thing I need to do, God, it looks a right mess, doesn't it? Is connect the negative lead from the microphone to the collector side of the transistor. What we can do is just bend that into shape, bend it across, and overlock that. There we go. I'm going to like this, but leaning over everything just makes it a, a bit difficult. There we go. I'm going to reach shrink this when we put it all together. That's going to be a bit tight, so we're just going to make sure we don't short anything. So that's the, um, the audio amplifier part done. Okay, so this is what we've got at the moment. This is going to be our positive rail. So that's supplying power to the amplifier circuit and also the load resistor on the microphone. So basically, there's our negative rail just there. That's obviously the emitter side of the transistor. Uh, so basically what we need to do now is get an output from the collector side um, so we're going to use this 10, this sorry, this 100 end cap here. And this will be tapping off the collector side of the transistor. So basically then this will feed its signal into the oscillator part of the circuit then to do its modulation. 
That's what we'll do next. Not wrong with that. Okay, next stage is C2, which is the output, the audio output from the amp. So this connects into the bottom of the 10K. Basically, the um, collector side of the um, audio transistor. Right, so basically the other end of that now is going to go to the amplifier, I mean sorry, to the um, the oscillator. That will be the base of the second transistor. Alright, all that part's done. So this is what we've ended up with so far. Remember, that's our positive input. This is C2. Signal output from the amp. And we've got our negative side here, which connects to the emitter side of the um, transistor and also the um, negative side of the microphone. All right. Next part we're going to build is the tank circuit. Okay, the second transistor is the transistor that's used in the tank circuit. So what we've got here is a 10 PF cap which is C5 that goes across the emitter sorry the um, collector and emitter side of the transistor basically this this keeps the, um, the tank circuit working. It's basically the feedback cap this switches the transistor on and off. That's a very fast rate. So we're going to build this, it'll, be, it'll start off at around about 100 megahertz. So basically, this will be switching the transistor on and off at 1 million times a second. Quite astonishing, really, isn't it? Just wrap them leads around both sides. Okay, as you can see here, we've attached. C5, the 10 PF cap across the um, collector and emitter side of the um, transistor. Just solder that in there. There you go. Right, next we just need to trim the leads. There we go, like that. What we'll do. I'll grab the collector side of the um, transistor and just bend the leads up. Be careful, you don't want to break these off. Because I know a lot of my subscribers actually make what I show. No, I like this. Can you see that? Just like that. Okay, our next stage is uh, attaching the um, 5 turn inductor to the collector side of the transistor. Just make sure you tin this and if you are using enamel wire just make sure you scrape off all the enamel covering. Zoom in, shall we? There we go. Okay, next part to install now is C4, the 33PF. That goes across the inductor that makes up the um, tank circuit. So if you're building this, it really needs to be about 33PF. Just makes up the tune circuit. 
Oh, got the one side on. Um, next side could be a bit tricky because you could desolder. There we go. So the part you can see here now, these are the tank circuits. Now the tank circuit's got um, various di different names, could be an LC circuit, tank circuit, tune circuit. Um, but basically, it's a very clever device and it operates at an amazing speed. The way the tank circuit works is when you apply power to this side of the circuit, it charges this cap up. And once this cap's charged up, it'll discharge then into the coil. And what it does then, it builds up a magnetic field in the inductor. And when the cap's empty, this magnetic field will collapse. And what happens then, it will actually charge the cap up in the opposite direction. So basically it swings round, 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 and an alarming rate. So if this is a 100 megahertz transmitter, which it will be, it's going to swing round at 1 million times a second. Quite astonishing really. And these circuits are using radios and various other devices. Ok, should we get on to the next stage? Right, next part to install now is R5, which is here, which is the uh, 100 ohm resistor. That connects to the emitter side of the transistor. Basically it's just a current limited resistor. Uh, if you haven't got a 100 ohm, you can go up to even 1k. But if you go up to 1k, bear in mind that the, um, the RF power will be a lot lower. I mean really you don't want to go much lower than 100R really, 100 ohm resistor. Because obviously, well, the lower the, the lower this load resistor is, the more current your transmitter is going to use. So we we'll just cut the leads to size. Okay, we've we'll just cut the leads to size. So just going to attach that now to the emitter side. There we go. Alright, next part to install now is the 1N, 1N cap, which goes from negative side of the circuit to the base of the um, transistor here and the oscillator circuit. So what we'll do, we'll just cut the leads to size. Okay, as you can see there, leads cut to size. So attach the one side of the 1N to the base. Bit tricky doing this, leaning over everything. That's the one side in. As you can see, there we've got one side in. I solder on the other side now. There we go. Perfect. Next stage is fitting C6, which is the 10p cap. That's the output to the antenna. Now, there's a couple of ways you can install this. You can install it on the admitter side or the collector side. Now, if you put it to the collector side, it'll give you more RF power, but the transmitter will be less stable. So moving around the transmitter or touching the antenna or go near the battery, it will affect the frequency slightly. But if you attach it to the emitter side, it makes the transmitter a lot more stable. Uh, if you've seen in previous videos of mine, you can touch these. If you, you know, you can touch them, you can hold the battery, you can move them around, and the frequency will stay bang on. So what we're going to do, we're going to attach it to the emitter side. Just 
Be careful when you do this. I should have attached it earlier to be honest because you could desolder the parts. Oh, that's going on nicely. Alright. That's our uh, antenna output. Bang on. Well, here's our two parts completed. Here's the audio amplifier. And here's our oscillator. Complete circuit done. Remember that's your RF output. That's the negative side. Uh, remember here, this is our 100 um, N output, which was C2. So that's got to affix to here, the base of the transistor. Um, this side out, you see this lead here, that's, obviously that goes to your 10K resistor onto the audio amp. Well, that's got to connect to the top side of the inductor, which is that side here. So that's what we want to do. Well, firstly, we'll attach that to that. This is a bit tricky. This is because you've got to keep all the parts away from each other. But it can be done. All right. So first thing I do, positive to positive. Okay. Let's attach our positive leads. So this is just going to connect here to the other side of the coil, like that. Now right. that's connected up. Okay, next connection now was the um, C2, the 100 n output from the uh, audio amplifier. And that goes here to the base of the second transistor on the oscillator side. Can you see it here? It's connecting there to there. No, it looks a bit complicated the way it is, but it's simple really, it's a simple circuit. Here we go. So we've connected that up now. Right, next part to install now, we'll connect together, is the negative side of the 100R resistor coming from the second transistor. And we've got to connect that to the negative side of the microphone. Looks a bit of a mess, but it's all connected correctly. And what I'll do before I apply power, obviously, I'm going to check everything to make sure nothing's touching. Well, I've checked the circuit. I mean, a lot of the parts are very close to each other. I mean, you've got less than half a millimeter on some parts, so just be very careful and check all your work. All right, so here's our output. Yeah. Remember that's coming from the emitter side. So that's where we'll attach our antenna. And we've just got to put our battery leads on then. And we're all done. Our next part to install is the battery connector. So basically, we'll connect it to First one's the negative side of the microphone. See that? Let's see, is it focused? All right. And the next side is the outside positive side of the inductor. Remember to fix it there, not the inside on the um, collector side of the transistor. I've got to look myself. Should this side out? Oh, there we go. Just got the antenna now. Just got to um, connect the antenna now to C6, which is there, which is the output. There we 
we go. That's all connected up now. Looks a bit of a mess, but what we're going to do, we're going to test it, then not glue it together, then peach rink it. So basically, at this stage now, you've just got to basically check everything, check all your connections, and check there's nothing touching. Alright, so I'll have a good look at that before we put power to it. Oh, that's the first mistake I've made in a while. There is two components left. Uh, the one is R4, which is the 47k, going from um, positive to the base of the transistor, which turns it on for the oscillator. So let's get that installed. So one side in. Now it's the 47k there. So you're coming from positive here, through here, and to the base of the second transistor, which is just out. It's quite difficult to do these sometimes. <coughs> Recording, you've got to remember quite a lot. Alright, that's in. Alright, last part to install now is the 22N across the battery. If you can't get a 22N, you could, you could use a 100N or something right now. Just keeps the circuit nice and tight. If you see my other videos, you'll see me use these across the rails. There, there. there we go. Well, time to test it now. I was going to double check it all and test it. Well, does it work after all that? Here's my frequency counter. Should we plug it in, shall we? Well, I haven't got the magic smoke. Well, here goes. Oh, about 91.1. Bang on. So it's transmitting. Give it a quick test before we glue it in then. Yeah. Oh yeah. Testing, testing. 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 One, two, testing, one, two. One, two, one, two. Testing, testing, yeah. Testing, that's one. Yeah, one, two. Yep. That's not too good then, we're just getting too much feedback, but what we'll do now, we're not glue it together. Okay, I've um, double checked the circuit, works perfect. So what I'm going to do now is just hot glue it in. You haven't got any hot glue on one of these guns. Just use normal glue. Use anything. I mean, I'm eat, I'm eat shrinking this, so you could stick it inside of a felt tip pen, couldn't you, if it was wide enough? I don't want to do the coil because um, we're going to need that sticking outside the heat shrink to do our uh, tuning. Alright, let's let that dry now. Well, should we put the heat shrink on now? So I've cut this to size so it might just fit in there. There we go. There we go, just see the mark sticking out. I'll get that on the cooker now, give it some eight. Now if you're doing this, please be careful. I've done this a few hundred times, so... 
Be very careful if you do it yourself. That doesn't need much heat. There we go. You see the um, coil sticking out in it, so we'll use that to adjust the coil. Oh, there it is, all done. Yeah, quite an easy build. Not the nicest looking thing, but it's a fully functional FM transmitter made with um, simple components. And it wouldn't cost you much at all to make this. What we'll do now, give it an audio test. Well, there it is on the table. What we'll do now is give it its audio test. Let's just shut the frequency it's on. It's about 92. 92 something. Right, we'll go and find that on the radio. Right, so what we'll do is stick our telly on. Eventually. Oh, it's not, oh, it's not very loud. <laughs> so it's a problem. Um, right, let's go upstairs now and listen to that. Doing auto tune, you should find it with auto tune. Sometimes I don't, you have to manually search. There we go. That doesn't sound bad at all, does it? No idea, Greenwich, cricket team. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds great, doesn't it? I say, not many parts making this transmitter. Do it yourself. A lot of my subscribers do do them. And they, um, they do message me saying they've had wonderful results with these simple transmitters. Quite a good signal. Um, gave all the sort of uh, people of West Indian extraction yeah. I knew people like that part of London. Mm. Uh, Sounds great, doesn't it? I mean, you need decent uh, microphones. I mean, this is, I think, they're Kepo microphones. That's what I get, use when I'm, I build my transmitters that I'm selling on my, on my website. Uh, against England and the banging of tin cans. And it was that summer of 76. Sounds great, doesn't it? It was, it was 100 degrees. Oh, and she's not subscribed. Please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Oh, there you go. Lesson, I'll see you all soon.